What's going on guys? Clint here with Classic Firearms and we've got Matt back today. What's up? And we got more guns. Better yet, we got Moss guns. Am I right? <laughs> Well, kind of. I mean, it's it's French guns, not Spanish, but we do have them, and we're happy to bring them to you guys at home. Absolutely, guys. So, yes, we've got another handful of surplus rifles in, and this time, like Matt said, we've got some French Moss rifles here. So, Matt, pick one up, show the camera, show the audience, and tell me, tell us about these guns, because other than being French and semi-auto, I don't know a lot about them. All right, so these are Moss 4956, and in fact, here on the left side of the receiver, you're going to see that prominently marked. Uh, Moss is an abbreviation for the manufacturer of these rifles, which is the Manufacture de Armes de Saint Antien, or something like that. I like how you naturally went into a French accent there. That, that uh, was, you that was you really kind of have good. to, but uh, I'm pretty sure I still butchered the pronunciation <laughs> though. <laughs> um, but so these were adopted by the French military in 1949. Uh, the development of them stems to pre World War II. Everyone was looking for that same automatic rifle. They had the Moss 38, yep. Moss 40, and then they finally kind of hit the development with the Moss 44 post war. Gotcha. It was adopted as the Moss 49, but then these rifles, the 4956, are a improved version. They shorten the rifle, they lighten the rifle, they put this nice grenade launcher, muzzle brake, uh, muzzle device on the end here, mm -hmm. and integrated a grenade sight with gas cut off to the barrel. Nice. And so that's what we have here is the Moss 4956. Very cool, guys. And we just got a handful of them out here just to show you guys what to expect and that's them right there so of course from what we have here on the table and from the majority that we've seen it looks like they do have some sort of stamping rock number yeah something. something like that going on with them and everything that we're seeing here all of the knobs are looking good um also too there it is with the bolt held open talk about just cool rifles man so i guess what would have been our answer to this, I guess? So I would say it maybe resembles kind of an M14 Woodstock type of thing. I don't know. That's the only thing I can really think of because I do know that there's a little bit of back and forth at that time period between who had what and right. all that stuff. So I like to think of this as another good example of what we called a transitional rifle. So yes. you know, before World War II, everyone was looking for that semi-automatic mm -hmm. battle rifle. Yeah. And then after World War II, a lot of countries kind of finally adopted the semi-automatic rifle, either in a full cal uh, full rifle cartridge like this. This is 7.5 by 54 French, yep. which is the same thing the Moss 36 used during World War II, um, and also in kind of lower intermediate cartridges. So we of course moved on to the 30 uh, 30 <laughs> the 308 to replace the 30 out six. Right. Um, although 308 was designed to basically mimic the ballistics of a 30 out six, but you know you had people going into the 760 by 39 and other intermediate cartridges. Um, you know, so yeah, you're right. It, it is reminiscent of an M14, kind of like it's a little bit reminiscent of like the VZ-52s we've seen. Yeah. Or like the SKS, a semi-automatic cartridge, magazine fed. You know, like a lot of the guns, it didn't have an extremely long life because there were these advancements that had taken place in the meantime where you could get to a select fire um, military rifle. Right, gotcha. And really cool design on these guys too. Also to the magazine, this might be confusing for some people, has a clip. Yep. Yes, so it does. <laughs> it's, it's not a clip. It's not clip fed. It's just the magazine actually has a clip attachment that you can see right there, and that's how it latches into place. So instead of utilizing like a natural type lock and then you have a paddle release, well, that paddle release is essentially right on the magazine. So pretty cool. And I like that. It's similar to uh, some of the Swedish, uh, sorry, some of the Swiss rifles, like yeah. the K31. And it's a very simple, easy, I mean, you can't mess that up too bad. Right. It's a very simple design. Uh, I want to pick this one up here. Um, you can see there are some kind of carvings here in this stock, uh, right here by the receiver. So that's definitely something you can expect to possibly find on some of these mm -hmm. rifles. Um, remember that, you know, as military surplus, the condition of them does vary. So, you know, even if you don't see uh, something on these rifles, that doesn't mean that you're not going to see some variation that's not on this table on right. the rifle you might get at home. But, you know, there could be some minor cracks, especially in the upper, uh, the handguard in front. Mm -hmm. um, you know, all the stocks should be stable and, and shootable. Uh, but yeah, you know, these are very interesting pieces. Um, early direct gas impingement system. Yeah. So it's kind of like an AR-15 in that way. In fact, this is more of a true gas impingement than the AR-15. You know, the AR-15, yeah. the gas gets channeled into the bolt carrier, yeah. which unlocks the bolt head and stuff. This, it's not, you know, 
it's it's actually channeling directly against the bolt carrier in the front. So this oh, wow. is just oh, so yeah, it's just pushing it, blowing it right just back, blowing it straight back. Gotcha. Yeah. So the bolt carrier group isn't acting as a piston in a sense. Right. Right. Gotcha. Okay. Cool. So, so yeah, just, you know, in the Air nice. 15, the gas kind of acts in a, as a piston inside of the yeah, bolt carrier. Yeah. You know, but uh, in this case, it's literally just blowing it straight back. Um, so it's it's a true, more true direct gas blowback uh, impingement in that system. Um, it's pretty cool. Although, of course, it does lock since this is a full size rifle yeah. cartridge. There is a locking uh, mechanism in here. But uh, yeah, you know, you have again these uh, grenade launcher sights. Yep. This integrates with a gas cutoff. So when the grenade launcher sight is up, you know, it actually cuts the gas. So you're not going to cycle back here. That oh, lets cool. you single load your blank cartridge. Right. And then you have to kind of pull back on this in order to get it to come down. You have uh, easy enough. Nice adjustments for distance here, marked on the barrel directly. Oh wow! And uh, we're gonna show you those kind of numbers right there, right there on the barrel. That is pretty neat. And you actually have a rail. This back here is a optics rail. Oh really? Yes. Well, how about that? So this was kind of like, you know, we've been uh, you know comparing yeah. to all kind of different firearms. So kind of yeah. like with an AK-47. Yeah. That rail on the left side of the receiver is designed to take an optics mount. Oh man, that's pretty neat. I did not know that. Then again, that's why I brought you in, because like I said, other than being French and semi-auto, I don't know a whole lot about these guys. And Matt, of course, as always, we appreciate you. And uh, that is the Moss rifle that we have here again. Moss 49, right? Moss 4956. 56. Let's be uh, let's be clear on that, because I don't want to be misleading <laughs> anybody here. So 4956 Moss. There we go. But yeah, guys, really cool rifles. Love how clear the stamping is on all these rifles as well. Again, right there on that side there, where you can see that opposite of the clip attached magazine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, you're right. So many times uh, military surplus rifles, the markings get kind of dinged a little bit or a yeah. little worn. It's very hard to see. These are prominently stamped. Yeah. It's very easy to read these things. Yeah, which is cool. Definitely like seeing that as well. So guys, if you're looking to make your way into the surplus market and why not get yourself some cool old school French semi-autos here, why not? Go ahead and take advantage of that here. We'll have them up on the side, of course. And uh, any final thoughts? I mean, besides the coolness of, of these guns, yeah. we should mention the coolness of our giveaway. That is very true, guys. So we just ended our Daniel Defense PDW. Oh. That's a sweet pistol. Pew, pew. I, oh my god, it's a, it's a really cool pew pew for sure. And then Frank over at Daniel Defense was kind enough to show us into the entire arsenal full of like pew pews. So if you haven't seen that video, go back and check it out anyway because it's pretty informative. I didn't get to go. Yeah, really fun. Maybe next time. Uh, but our current giveaway, yeah, definitely check that one out. Uh, seeing how it should be out here soon. Put it this way, it's got two barrels and it's a whole lot of pew. A lot of fun. So go check that out, guys. And I think we'll go ahead and end it there, man. Yeah. All right, cool. Guys, as always, we appreciate you and your business. God bless. We'll see you next time at ClassicFirearms.com.